Thank you, Hannah. That was the appropriate amount of laughter. <laughs> her, her laughter is like really hurtful today. Yeah, she's really leaning into the. Uh, yeah, yeah. The problem is I didn't record the laugh at the beginning of that. So yeah, it's cool. Welcome back to the Old Colony Cast, a podcast about all things Plymouth and surrounding areas. I am Andy, your host, joined today by Hannah, co-host. Hello. And our always sarcastically funny fish. It's putting me on the spot, Andy. Not always funny. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. Ha ha. I feel like we still hit the right note. Never mind. <laughs> and See, on we go. You say that like I won't accept your pity laughter. <laughs> Thank oh you. It gosh. feeds me. Um, so we're not here to talk about Fish's comedy career. Oh, thank God. Uh, we're here to talk about something else. We yeah. are. What are we talking about today? We are going to talk about uh, Anne Capute. Capute, yes. I listened to her name said a bajillion times today. Sorry, one second. Side note. Uh, sidebar Fish. Um, I, is that on the list? Yes. yes, it is. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. I, I, it's been a while. I think we've had a murder for this week. Oh. Uh, Okay, I see I that s- glint in her eye. Okay, I assume this episode has body count. All right, there is, there is, and there isn't. And I'm going. I mean, I, I'm sure they're like it's been a few years, so they're probably not still like fresh. But no, I'm gonna um, discourage some jumping ahead. Okay, why are you pointing at me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you've listened to any of our episodes, wait. What is this? Is this it? What? The hundredth? Is this hundred? No, no, we already recorded that. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Uh, no, our one hundredth episode was Hannah goes mountain climbing. Oh, which just went up to it. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, you can edit that out because that makes no sense now. That's okay. Uh, so Ann Capute, she um, I don't know why I wrote it that way. Anyway, so she was uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's from Jamaica Plain. She okay. went to high school there, and she did drop out at the age of sixteen. So, a little after the decision for uh, her to leave high school, um, she was like volunteering at a hospital. Okay, and, out of curiosity, about when was this? Oh, sorry. Well, she was born. Let's just say before the 80s. Okay, okay, because my dad also went to high school in Jamaica Plain for oh, a couple okay. of years. So the 1920s. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, like 1970s. I don't. I forget how right. old she was. Uh, uh, by the time 1980, which is where like the story really picks up, I'm just giving you some background on it. Okay. 1980 to 1990. Okay. 1990 to 1994. Okay. 1994 to 1994. So she is a fair way older than my dad. Okay. Okay. So she was in school in the... I just said before the 80s. Okay. So she dropped out of school, which would have been I mean, about... Like the 60s, right? Yeah. Am I doing that math right? Uh, sure. No, because she would have dropped out about 28 years before 1980, which would have been 1952. Okay. All right. There. Uh, okay. Before the 80s. Sure. Before the 80s. <laughs> like I, feel, I said, guys, yeah. if you wanted to do that math, that I was on you. I sarcastically said the 20s, and I don't feel like I was that far off. <laughs> yeah. So she was uh, vo- just spending some time volunteering at a, a hospital, and um, the people who worked there encouraged her that she should pursue her nursing. Okay. Um, what was she doing profession, in the hospital? Profession. You know? Volunteering. Okay. But, <laughs> Specifically, okay. I don't know. There's a lot of different yeah, volunteer assume, things like, you can do. Candy striping. Yeah, I can. You can. Um, paperwork. Like, yeah. Right. Like, there's the people who like bring you to your sure your car, pushing you around in wheelchairs. Yeah. I was gonna make a reference to what we we're talking about off, off air, and that makes no sense. So. Um. So she ended up pursuing that, and she went into nursing school, and she graduated top of her class. Nice. Good for her. So, at the age of forty, she's great. She, yeah, at the age yeah, of forty, somebody didn't graduate know, right? high school. I mean, she really, that's life around. yeah, that's some, you know, some. Go- appreciate the effort, right? No, so, please cut that out from under all of us, please, Hannah. Okay, so at the age of forty-four, we're sped up now. She, um, she's a mother of seven. She's living seven, seven. Who? She's living in Plimpton. Okay. And she's working at right up the road, Morton Hospital in Taunton. Okay. 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 So single mother? Married? No, she's got she's okay. married. Right. Yeah. Still mother of seven. 
Hardest <laughs> job there is. Good for her. <laughs> so the beginning of May 1980, a patient named Norma Linus arrives at Morton Hospital. Um, Norma was moved there in anticipation for surgery. Uh, the year before, she had hip surgery, which uncovered some cancer. Um, and they they realized like they, they it was in her spine. She started receiving radiation for it. And now it was time to remove what they saw. So that's what she was at Morton Hospital for. She was being okay. treated actively being treated for cancer that existed. In her um, hip. Um, no, I think it. I think spine. Oh, spine. Spine. Sorry. Spine was what they uncovered by whatever type of surgery she had to get in her hip. Okay. Which it, it was kind of unclear if it had to do with cancer too, so yeah. it could have been related or unrelated. So, um, but it did seem like they discovered the cancer from that surgery. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, so, mm, Norma was fifty-four and the mother of four. Um, Anne was one of several staff helping to treat Norma during her stay there. And on May 18, 1980, about two weeks after arriving at Morton Hospital, Norma was given meds to ease some of the pain and discomfort she was in. She died within seven hours of receiving those dosages. Cancer is a very tragic disease. It is, yes. So four days after Norma's death, the hospital released a statement um, quote saying the possible intentional overdose sedation of a terminally ill patient. Now, this is where it's confusing because uh, you'll see going forward a little bit that was she terminally ill going in? That was actually not really the case. She was oh. being treated. Right. Yeah. Generally, they don't go for aggressive radiation treatment if you're terminal. Yeah. It's yeah. just kind of a well, we'll ease the pain and yeah. do what we can. Yeah. You're going to be uncomfortable. It's right. not an easy going uh, path for anyone if they're experiencing any type of cancer that's actively being treated. Sure, you're going to yeah. be in pain yeah. usually. Um, but the cause of death was listed as uh, lung and uh bone cancer i believe so or cancer wherever they found it whatever type that was so um and and two other nurses that were registered um nurses and and was a licensed practicing nurse okay um, which I always get a little confused with the different types of nurses what, what's an lpn and rna yeah and, like, yeah what's yeah. the different yeah but there's yeah. Don't ask me. Okay. I, mean, I know there is a difference, but I don't. Know. <laughs> so and then there's like a nurse practitioner, which is a whole different thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, they were. I hear tick 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 tick. Fish is looking it up. Oh, really? So Judith Foley and Nancy Robbins were the two other nurses, um, and they were investigated as well in connection to the death of their patient. Um, Anne was indicted on August 1980. R. Anne. R. Anne Capute. Yep, so Slide she was looked down. at immediately because I believe she was the one who actually gave the, di- like, dosage. Yeah, yeah, okay. But she's also the one who just follows directions right. and stuff like that. So, um, so August 1980, um, she's accused of willingly and intentionally killing Norma and was charged with illegally dispensing drugs. Okay. So not just the not just the murder charge, but also an extra charge of dispensing drugs or however it's called. I don't yeah. know. Issuing. Administrating? Yeah. yeah. Administering? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Administrating. That's not the right word. Just writing a lot yeah. of different <laughs> paperwork in the office about <laughs> drugs. Um, so, and we're past the part, too, where if you end up jumping ahead, you're okay. There was oh, just a, if you want to. Okay. If there's if you feel the need. Cool. Um, now that he has permission, I, he doesn't care I anymore. Would I ever feel the need to do that, uh, dear but listener? There was just a specific part where I didn't want you jumping ahead because it would ruin the whole like layout of the last part. Of the oh, story. okay, gotcha. <laughs> so now that we're past, I feel that, like I did a good job not you, jumping ahead. Yeah, you did. You did a great job. So Anne was uh, in different sworn like statements that reports have reported on um only ever said that she was following doctor's orders which Mm -hmm. there was some confusion on what exactly that was um but the idea was that they were just strictly trying to obviously help manage the pain um but the stories differ on what was 
issued by the doctor for pain sure. meds and how frequently I to mean, give them. I mean, is she or isn't she terminal? I mean, I suppose yes. that's part of it. Yes, exactly. So, um, and records show that Norma received 195 milligrams of morphine over seven hours. Is that a lot? Okay, I'm not next to that. That's, a, like a, that's okay. a lot. Yeah, it is. It's What's, a lot. Do we know what a normal dose is? Oh, they said, I think <laughs> from the movie I watched about 30, but the movie I watched is fake. <laughs> so <laughs> You watched a fake movie? It's a, it's a fake story, so I don't know how much of it they, um, oh, okay. they actually like pulled that was real. You looking it up, Fish? Sure. Cool. Um, I just looked over and I said 92 degrees Fahrenheit. And I <laughs> so statements released by hospital investigations say that one of the nurses, so they had a couple nurses mm-hmm. statements that they took during like their investigation, um, was, quote, I just mm. wanted to stop her suffering. She had enough um, MS, which is um, morphine sulfate, to kill an elephant. I knew I killed her the next morning. And they don't say what nurse said that. Of oh. the three that they, so they had under knew suspicion. She was <sighs> Who knew was, what? So the nurse knew that she was over administering. Oh, yeah. Do we have a uh yeah. So there are a lot of technical terms here that I do not know a ton of. So the usual adult dose for pain for morphine is uh, let's see, 0. 0.1 milligram to 0. 0.2 milligram per kilogram every four hours. Mm-hmm. So figure two to 10 milligrams. Yeah. And they give what, 196? Over the span of seven hours. So over the space Ooh. of seven hours, they should have been at most 20. And considering wow. that she was probably an older woman and probably she's fairly 54. small. Yeah, I was going to say, if she's 54, suffering from cancer, she's, she's probably prob- It probably should have been like four to six. Mm-hmm. Wow. In my, I looked this up in four seconds, medical opinion. <laughs> you, you heard that right there. Fish has gone to medical school. This is his professional opinion. He knows what he's talking about. In my professional opinion, as a guy who edits a podcast that's not about medicine. Uh, so, yeah, it appears that the nurse who said this um, knew, had a gut feeling that she over-administered pain meds, but not that necessarily it was intentional. Or because it depends on how you read that. It someone could be saying that in a stressed out kind of way, like, oh, I, like you know, she came in the next day, find out she said, like, oh god, I know it was because of that. Like it could right, have been right. from a, a, a really wrongful mistake. That, that, that statement made, without a, without context is yeah, helpful. or like it, I don't know if I don't think anyone would come in. Uh, tell their like HR thing like I knew I killed hey, her. I don't mean to bug you I think I killed someone. Yeah. I'll come back after lunch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it, de- seem busy. it depends on how they that you, you read it how you know what I mean mm-hmm. so it but it does kind of make you think that they knew that the drugs they were administering were I mean, was over they the amount. To- but y- yes, absolutely. I think that there was other articles I read that at the same time, all of this ang- like uh, this was happening. A lot of other quote unquote angel of death scenarios were happening around the country, where like it's a like, Dr. Kevorkian kind of thing, or suspected angels of death. I shouldn't say like actual, where yeah. where uh, just the medical field in general was getting. I don't want to say cracked down on because you don't want malpractice happening and people dying because of it, mm-hmm. but like just a really. I think because maybe because Dr. Kevorkian that there was a big like stri- a, a better strictness about the handling of who's signing off on what what exactly is being administered mm-hmm. and the the amount of people it goes through to get to the patient because it sounds yeah. like from the the this case it was a very loosey goosey passing of administer this much as much as the, you know make yeah. make them comfortable yeah, yeah. like well the, and the, you the know, funny thing is like my mother was a nurse during this time Mm -hmm. and there was a real shift in how you administer drugs how you handle drugs and who handles drugs and you know for a multitude of different reasons I'm sure this is part of it and like people taking uh, extra drugs that were not being you know watched so much that was you know that sort of thing but yeah there was there's a definite like we're shift na- we're now if you go there's like four people standing in a row being like the so and so wants a date of birth date of birth this we're gonna get another date of birth yeah, you know, like right. it's very like procedural and 
right. like double check you all the way. Right, for sure. Yeah, which sounds like this was part of the the issue, the trickle yeah. down effect, the game of telephone. Yep, it's not um, unfortunately end well in this situation. So um, the Bristol County DA Ronald Pina had the body of the deceased exhumed six weeks after the death. Um, the state pathologist Ambrose Keeley found no evidence of cancer in any vital organs. Ooh. Which... So wasn't a terminal patient. Right. Just follows up on that theory. Because so, that was going to be like... Th- that was... Up to that point, that was my really... Uh, the thing that was really sparking my interest. Was right. Like, if it is someone who's, like, legit terminal, mm-hmm. then I don't think helping them die with dignity is a... A terrible a thing. A bad thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like uh, she was not terminal, and it, this is um, the will will be the not the defense, the county's the county's like accusation uh, prosecution. Yeah, that that she was not a terminal patient. She went in not terminal. Yeah, everyone understood she was not terminal. She was actively being treated. They would get um, doctors up on the stands to testify about like. Why would we be doing X, Y, and Z if we thought this person would be dying? Right. That kind of thing. Um, so there was also a mention in another article I read that they found more cancer in her breast and that it was just unknown and had spread but did not actually cause her death. Um, Anne's defense attorney, Pat Piscatelli, who was no. <laughs> pretty notable um and he was once the attorney to the boston strangler oh okay so he would represent Anne through her court case um judge prince oversaw the case and it was uh i love his music yeah um heard by a jury of seven men five women over a six-week trial period with five weeks of testimony it's called the jury of the revolution <laughs> I don't know, I prefer his work as the judge formerly known as Prince. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So, uh, the county assured that the meds killed the patient, but the defense relied on the what was called the runaway cancer. That it was like, you're finding cancer after death. You know, in pla- you know right. still that like there was so much the, cancer in the body. They were doing her a favor. Not necessarily that they were doing her a favor, that that, that, that was the It wasn't cause. the morphine that killed her, it, it was, was the all cancer. the cancer. Yes, it was 196 milligrams. Yeah, I don't. This isn't the best. It's, okay. it's you work with what you got. Yeah, I suppose. I guess. And maybe that uh, that could have been part of like the, how, you know, what what would you do if you were in this situation? Mm-hmm. How would you feel? Like would you know that kind of? But I, and it's also one of those without the the tracking and, and procedural stuff we have now. You know, and I'm making a lot of assumptions because I don't know. But like, if you walk in, you give them whatever their dose is mm-hmm. and without proper tracking someone else comes in and be like oh did you give so and so right i don't know did they i don't know i'm gonna give it to her any you know right like, was it accidental just dumb malpractice yeah um and from the sounds of like one of the first article i read it opened up with like the sounds of one of the patient's pain could be held like heard through the hallway so i think there was a real need from or a feeling from the people on site taking care of her to help that. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily think that was the intention was to kill anyone by by any by anyone. So yeah, it's just a bad circumstance. I think so. Yeah. Um, and it definitely was the argument. Uh, like I said, they had doctors on the stands testifying to like what the cancers was in her body, and then going back to the other doctors who were talking about the treatment and how that plan would never have been made for a terminally ill person. She came into the hospital as not terminally ill, right. just getting surgery and treatment, that kind of thing. Um, so Anne made an appeal to the jury asking them to, quote, set me free and return me to my family. Um, and after a 13-hour deliberation, the jury found Anne not guilty of murder of Norma Linus and not guilty of the d- drug distribution charge, which I always find in these like crazy cases, there's always like one extra one that they tack on. Yeah, there's always some weird like yeah, you know. 
So, you know, if we don't murder get him for in the, the first and jaywalking. Yeah, yeah, there really is. <laughs> yeah. I feel like the last thing we like with Aaron Hernandez, it was like this huge yeah, case of something weird. Yeah, and yeah. then it was like in possession of a gun. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I, I feel like there's a legalese reason why. Yeah, you know, whether it's like an Al Capone thing, where like if we don't get him on the murder, maybe we'll get him on the we'll get him on gun. racketeering. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's, yeah, that's something I've just noticed as we talk about these things. Um, so uh, that set the tone for the two other nurses mm. as well and what would happen with them because if the case for, for Anne who administered the drugs yeah. was not solid, then how much of a chance did the county have actually getting the other two nurses um, who were in the line of duty of, like, directing Right. what drugs to give and taking doctor's orders and so on. So um, it was also revealed through the trial and after the trial that Anne had used a false identity to enter into nursing school. Oh. Which makes sense considering she's a high school dropout. Oh, that's why I don't, can't jump ahead. Yes, ah. because I thought you would like hear that and be like, wait. How'd she get in if no, she dropped out of not. high school? I, okay. I assume she got like a GD. Or... I literally was like in my head while I was writing this, I was like, I have to write this note. So I because I could hear you like asking <laughs> Shut that up question. Andy is the Cut note. Andy yeah. off. Yeah. <laughs> so she used the name in record like school records of a childhood friend. And she had gotten her LPN in 1977. And she was quoted from a reporter uh, saying, uh, what I did was wrong, but I don't think it I did anything Ill- illegal, which <laughs> I mean, I don't think that's how that works. Yeah, that's that's not how fraud works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all I did was apply to nursing school under a different name because I never finished high school. I don't see a problem with that, and it's like nursing's easy. Yeah, so she did graduate top of her class, though. So, so um, she, uh, with this coming out and all this stuff, she willingly like offered to give up her license surrender her license so that she wouldn't I would like to offer up my license that I should never have had to not get in trouble <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, voted three the board the state board of nursing voted three two to allow her to do that but as part of that she, she had mentioned that she really just didn't want to go through any more court hearings mm-hmm. cases so she said she would not testify against um those other two nurses okay. if they're, they're, she's like just let me give this up and yeah. like wash my hands of it please um, and they allowed her to do that. So she also told reporters that she wanted to get her name legally changed as she had been living with her alias for years. So now I'm like, I tried to find what her... Like, wait, which one was her real name? I don't know. Well, yeah, that's interesting. I think Anne Capute is her... That, well, Capute's her married name, but I'm like, is Anne her real name? Is she, yeah, Anne she could have been Anne? the name of the person she went to school with. That's what I mean. Oh, yeah, oh, that's but, interesting. Are yeah. they both Anne's? That's what I was... I was like, maybe they have this... Aren't we all But Anne's? I looked... I've tried... No. <laughs> I tried... I went deep web. I went deep on Reddit for this. I went, like, looking through all of the old... Because there's this... This didn't have, like, a ton of stuff on it, so I, like, literally reading through old, old, old articles, and I'm like... So now you've got to, like, dig into... Did no one... So it's something I'm, I'm going to... 1950s Jamaica Plain I'm high gonna, school yearbooks. I'm going to follow up because I didn't have enough time to do it today, but I will find it because I'm like, I'm so freaking curious. I will find you, Anne yeah. Capute. Yeah, literally. Listen, listener. If that is your don't real name, ever cross which Anna. it might not be. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I did not have time today to figure it out because this is one of those things that was will take Hannah me Hannah has a certain uh, set of skills <laughs> and she will find you. Yeah. <laughs> she will find you. She will find your friends. She will find your family. She will find your private Facebook page. She will find you. Yeah, so I'm going to figure it out. I promise that because uh, I was like, is that it's so? Not it's not a threat. It's is, not a threat. Is that not her real name? That is not a legally binding threat. So, um, anyway, just one of those things that I was like, "Who is this woman? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on?" Anyway, so uh, with the surrender, yeah, like I said, she um, the the cases were I think ended up being dropped um, against those two other nurses, um, and. The board actually did say once Anne got her GED, she could reapply for her license. Yeah. Which I thought was crazy. Yeah. And then um, 
they also said you could just move and work in another state too if you want. You can go to Rhode Island and get the yeah. hell out of here. Uh, Maine. They don't care. They have no rules in Maine. So I looked at a few different um, articles of the time that came out. New York Times article, um, a UPI archives article, which I think pulled from like a New Bedford paper, and then a Desert Sun article like that came out sorry, within the last. Desert Sun? It's like from a random town that just happened to write about the story. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Um, and they were like old school. They had like a picture of the article and then transcribed it. So you can oh, read yeah, it. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's nice of them. Yeah, so. You usually have typos in them too. Yes. Yeah. And the, the New York Times said, some of this may be typed up wrong because we're. Because <laughs> we just don't want to. Yeah. Someone's typing and we're not going to pay someone to spot check. Yeah, Look, guys, literally. that's just ridiculous. Look, guys, literally. this is an intern. This said. is an intern, guys. Yeah. What do you want? Yeah, literally, that was the disclaimer at the top of it. So they were all very old for articles. For some reason, it says fart four times in the middle of this article <laughs> and no one's checking it. <laughs> Pretty much. Wait, this one's a limerick. How, how is this one a limerick? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's, that's what I was dealing with and working through. Um,. But they did make a made-for-TV movie. A fake movie. And, so. Yeah, a fake movie. In also ni- known as a movie. In 1988 called Fatal Judgment. Ooh. It, bum, bum, bum. it was the classic made-for-TV movie. Like, yeah. perfect, perfectly executed. Um, it takes place around here, so everyone had a New England accent. But a bad TV? <laughs> no. Oh, really? They did it. I really? was like, Whoa. They do. They're not over exaggerating it. The casual conversation they have is like, "Chef's kiss." This is huh. they. They achieved what they achieved. What people born here yes. in Hollywood can't do. It was <laughs> wild. I had to look at the main actress's IMDb to see where she was born. She was born in New York, so not like too far off from yeah. catching what you know some sort of an accent. Obviously, different kind, but I think. Maybe because of that, she's able to transition. The, the subtleties they were able to drop in. Hmm. It was I was like, this is crazy. Huh. They were they are achieving it. The husband may be a little exaggerated. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But all the nurses and like this, just the rando people in it did a really good job. Hmm. I was impressed. Oh, um, okay. Where is it available on YouTube? YouTube. Yeah. yeah. Oh. You neglected to mention it's Patty Duke. Yes, it is. As Anne Capute. Okay. That's. I didn't really know who she was from anything else. She's in something I saw and I was like, oh, her. Show. Like she was a icon in fifties comedy. Yeah. Like she was huge. Well, she did a great job as Anne. And she only had like three kids in the movie. So that um, part was fake. Seven. Yeah. Well, it's a casting issue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there are like too many kids to try and underage dad. You try casting, try and yeah. You try getting like child labor rules for seven children. Yeah. Just, no, no. But A, it was a pretty good made. For, I like made for TV movies anyway. There's just something like nostalgic about them because they're the product. You don't expect a lot. Yeah. You don't yeah. expect a lot from yeah. them, but they did a good job. And, um, there was enough like subtle background story happening that obviously like you don't know if that actually happened and they stuck with the real story enough yeah yeah and um i enjoyed it and the recording on youtube still has like the commercials at the front and the back oh end that's of it. cool yeah so uh also there was a book called fatal dosage which i got to read all of one page on like the free google <laughs> The free old page read? Yeah. Well, if you like look up a book, it's like, see if you want to read it. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I'm like, no, I want to, I want the next page. See what they say. But I didn't feel like buying the book. So this is what we got. But maybe the book says what her real name is. Doubtful. Because I'm very interested. I'm sure you'll find out. I will. And I'll follow up. We'll follow up on that. So that's the story of Anne Capute. And I'm going to be honest, when I first heard about this person, um, I was certain it was an angel of death situation. And obviously, legally, not. Yeah. <laughs> um, as far as the eyes of the law are concerned, um, Anne is innocent. And um, basically, from what I can see, I don't, I have no idea. Like, yeah, I can't. It's so vague. Like, yeah. I mean, it could go anyway. It could be accidental. It could be yeah. intentional. It could be in, an angel of death type scenario. Um, I would think it would only, I don't think it would be like, I'm sure there was no ill will to this patient so i really am hopeful it wouldn't have just been like 
You heard it here first, listeners. Hannah says Anne killed her. Like, who was the lady I talked about who, like, would just kill patients? Was uh, that me? What was that? Yeah, was Jolly it? Jane Toppin? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, was that me or a different <laughs> podcast? <laughs> Is literally what I'm I was saying. I'm glad thinking. you didn't mean, was that you as in the person who killed people? No. I'm never letting With Hannah kindness. visit if I'm sick. Yeah. <laughs> it's, bad, it's, it's just not news. worth the risk. <laughs> She'd be like, what do you know about Angel of Death? Uh, be like, it's like a lot. It's a I know a lot. It's a toothache, Hannah. Calm it's like, down. it's a hangnail. <laughs> get away from me. I don't need morphine. It's a hangnail. Yeah, I, know. I don't even know where to get morphine, guys. Uh, poppy seeds. Okay. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> so that's it on Anne and I don't have a super strong opinion on it because I like it's yeah very, it doesn't seem like you could form one. no but it was I definitely when I received the story as an idea it seemed like an like a killer killer nurse you know yeah, what I yeah, mean yeah. like and I just don't perceive it that way no. but it it could be I just maybe don't, but it under the eyes of the law it's not it's fair <laughs> so so I think uh, this is the part where we stop talking and thanks for checking out the show today, listeners. Uh, if you enjoyed the content today, you can go over to patreon.com slash inebriart to support the show. You can join over there for just a few dollars a month and help us provide this fun content that you just checked out. You can also email us at inebriart.com with your questions, complaints, and concerns. Or you can find us on all social medias at inebriart or at inebriart6 on Instagram. And also don't forget to check out our other shows, Bar Talk Podcast, Old Colony Cast, Inebriart, and all the other shows on the Inebriart Network, which you can find at inebriart.com. Thanks again for listening.